Hello to you, our dear friends, our sisters and brothers in Christ. This is Brother Richard, and welcome to Love Life. Today, what I will be sharing to you is about undaunted hope. When we say undaunted, it means not discouraged or, or courageous resolve, especially in times of danger or in times of difficulty. There, it's even synonymous to unswerving means steady, always staying strong. And probably a lot of us now is asking, where can I get hope? Where is hope in this time now? And that's what I would like to speak to you about. But before anything else, Bukid Non is blessed with mountains, caves, um, streams of water, and even a lot of climbers, from not just from here in Bugidnon, but even from other places, would come here and um, seek to climb the mount some of the mountains here, especially Mount Kitanglan. And the reason is just, just want to have fun, just part of the leisure, or it can be their habit. They find um, they're just an enthusiast about climbing. And some of them just run from city life. And some would say that, uh, to find a greater sense of purpose, take a pause or probably some sort of reflection in a form of climbing. In the same way, it, it's also that in this time, it is similar to climbing up a mountain. Nowadays, probably like me and you, we've been praying and praying for this pandemic to end. And it seems it's an ending. We are uncertain when will this, when will the quarantine be lifted up, be lifted, and we don't, we are anxious of what other steps would the government will take, uh, will take in the next few weeks, in the next few days, and because of it, we lack of focus on the essentials of life, because also of the social media, and we just do a lot of things just to probably mairaos lamang yung isang araw. And a lot of us, a lot of people nowadays are being hopeless. We are bound to fear. We are doubt, we are in doubt, we are lost. And it seems that we are in an uphill climb. The question now is that, where will I get my hope? How, or what makes my hope undaunted, steady, always staying strong? In 1 Peter 6-7, it speaks about it vividly, and it says, So be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. And this verse, allow me to share to you on how can we have an undaunted hope? The first one is let us fix our eyes on what's ahead. As it says, there is wonderful joy ahead. It did not say that there's wonderful joy there, but it's still ahead of us. And it has something to do with our vision. For us, in order for us to reach a certain goal, we need to make sure that our vision is good. We know where we will be ending up. And probably now, our vision, our vision is fading, and we lock the focus, and we don't even know where to look into. We don't know what to focus on, and it seems that we are, being, we are frozen of what's happening now, and we don't know when or where it will end. Of because of that, not knowing where it will end, it keeps us from making steps then. But when we go, when we go to a certain mountain, we climb out a mountain, is that we are very expectant of reaching the top. Because we are, we, we are anticipating of the beauty of, of the view that we will be able to encounter, to experience upon reaching the top. It's the same thing as when we know that the ending is better, the top of the view is better, then you would be able to endure what's happening in between. Again, when we know 
your ending is better than your beginning, you'll be able to endure what's in between. And in Christ, my dear brothers and sisters, we know our ending is great because it start, it's a start of a better beginning. Fixing our eyes on, eyes on what's ahead provides us an eternal perspective that takes our attention from the trivial or temporary. It seems that our eyes now are looking into what's temporary, what's just in there, what's being presented unto us. But let's, you are being challenged of looking what's ahead of us, not just merely on what our eyes can just perceive. There are beauty ahead of these things. We might be hopeless now, but Jesus is asking us to have our eyes fixed on nothing. And the most important thing is for us to learn how to keep our eyes on Jesus as we keep our walk here on earth. As it says in Hebrews 12, 2, let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus on whom our faith depends from beginning to end. The second point I'd like to share to you is that it says that there is wonderful joy ahead even though you must endure trials for a little while. And it says it means that everything shall pass, my dear sisters and brothers. Just like my hair being turned by the wind. Yeah. But everything shall pass. Maybe probably we're putting gel now. Maybe we are finding a way to keep ourselves healthy. But eventually, it shall pass. Beauty passes. Life on earth, brothers and sisters, is inevitable. And we don't even know when will our time end here. And, but this pandemic taught us how precious and how crucial life is. And the overwhelming present troubles keeps us, that it seems, teaching us or telling us that it seems that it's an ending. But we need to bear in mind that in the, the scripture, Jesus raised Lazarus from death. Joseph became the second command after going to prison. And we know the story of Job who gained double in his finances after losing everything he had. And a lot more stories. And it shows that nothing is permanent here on earth except for the love of Christ. By then, my dear brothers and sisters, let us learn to trust God that these things shall pass. Because if we don't, then it seems that we are, we are limiting God's ability to work impossibility in our lives. We know that if we have Christ, as it is written, that nothing is impossible in Christ. In the same way as the tomb could have had been filled with this body, if we're keeping the God's ability to work impossibility in us, then it seems that we're making a story that the tomb is still filled with Jesus' body. And if it's the case, then the faith that we are proclaiming now is baseless or meaningless. For us to have an undaunted hope, my dear brothers and sisters, is for us to always keep in mind that everything shall pass. Let us not limit the works of wonders that Jesus or God in store for us. As it says in 2 Corinthians 4, 17, For our present troubles are small and won't last very long, yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. And the last point that I'd like to share with you is that as we keep uh, continue 1 Peter 1, 6, 7, these trials will show that your faith is genuine. These trials will show your faith is genuine. There's a need for us to have the genuineness of our faith in order for us to have an undaunted hope. I'm into planting nowadays because I'm just really happy of this quarantine time because I have the time to have some uh, that desire back then to, to plant, especially the backyard. It's, in a way, it's com comfortable because it's just outside, no? But learn that to test the seed, um, to test if the seed is good, is that we need to put it into water. 
and that the seed that sinks are the good ones while those that float are not every now and then every now and then is a test of faith as teachers i myself as a teacher is that we give quizzes we give oral recitation assignments projects and summative exams to test students learning and it's very important and in the same way we are being tested test gives us an indicator of how uh, how far or how much we have learned already in this life how much character have we built up and how much we have grown in our faith on the other hand a life without a test brothers and sisters is that is a life lived in comfort i can imagine that it's a sedentary life it's a lifeless form jesus assured us or showed it to us modeled it to us that he did not live a life of comfort but he lived a life of uncomfort a different test knowing that he is already the son of god but he was being tested and he says the same thing for us my dear brothers and sisters each test for us is a test of character and that which character is being challenged eventually being built up on us in james 1 3 be assured and understand that the trial and proving of your faith bring out endurance and steadfastness and patience there's a fruit brothers and sisters of the trials that we are in right now maybe the our feeling of hopelessness of because of this pandemic leads us to a form of igniting that undaunted faith and hope in christ in order for us to keep on is that let me suggest pra three practical things first is that draw near jesus is the source of our hope and if we are not drawn to jesus then we will not be strengthened let us learn to strengthen our relationship with the lord this time this is an opportunity for us to really strengthen our relationship with the lord Maybe in the past, uh, in the past months, the past years, we've been so we are so into building or strengthening relationship with others, but we forgot the most essential, the most um, important relationship that each of us, especially for us Christians, do have, which is our relationship with the Lord. It, and it can be done through prayer and reading the Scripture. And to have hope, brothers and sisters, to have hope, we must know God. Let's seek the Lord in this time. Seek the Lord's mind for us to understand what's the will of God for us in this time. And second, let's be surrounded with people who hope that goodness will take root upon uh, up, take root upon this present concern. Let's be surrounded with good people. Remember a story that a, a strawberry will not grow in a warm or a polluted city, but it will take root where it is suitable for growth. And in order for us to grow in our hope and in our faith is that we need to be surrounded, we need to be planted where we will be, uh, we will grow. Let's continue, let's also reach out for our friends and families and eventually we will receive in the same way some encouragement. And the last thing that I'd like to suggest, as Stephen Covey says, do what you can with what you have wherever you are or where you are. Do what you can with what you have where you are there are a lot of things that we cannot control in this time let's learn to focus on the things that we can control for me personally there's a backyard in there it's a way for me to to reflect on this life it's a way for me to put um, other things to do at the end of the day because I have motorcycles I'm more mobile to um, to find a way to come up with this backyard garden Brothers and sisters, there are a lot of complainers and doubters in this time. Let's not add to them. Rather, let's add to those who continue to keep their hope to the source of hope, which is Jesus himself. So those three, draw near to God, be surrounded with good people, and do what you can with what you have where you are. And the last note, maybe what we are experiencing right now that feeling of hopelessness 
is that can spur, spur or ignite a fire within us to keep us moving in this uphill climb. It seems that we are really moving in this, in this mountain of faith. Maybe we are still at the bottom of this mountain and we are being challenged to continue to rise. Or maybe in the, on our faith journey, we are already at the middle of the mountain and we're experiencing, experiencing the toughest part, the most uphill part of this climb. My dear brothers and sisters, in order for us to continue to keep moving, to be steady, to be undaunted in our hope, is that let us continue to fix our eyes on top. Let's keep our eyes, our minds, into Jesus' promises, for He is a faithful God to us. And always keep in mind, bear in mind, that these things, the experience that we are right, having right now, the hopelessness, will eventually pass, for nothing is permanent here on earth. And eventually, as we endure these tests, these trials, it brings forth much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. To end, so let us be glad. Let's remember like the seeds hidden underneath, underneath the soil, hidden in darkness, it's trying to grow, the roots grasping and toil to push the heaviness of soil compared to its young and weak stem, eager to see the light outside. Probably they are being sown, brothers and sisters, and we are taking root now. We are growing in their faith. Let's continue to push. Let's continue to keep pressing on. Let us press on in this life. To end, let us bear in mind what St. Paul wrote in his letter to the Hebrews. Let us hold undauntedly to the hope we profess, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us be concerned for one another, to help one another, to show love, and to do good. Allow me to pray for you, my dear brothers and sisters. And friends, you can also pray with me. Father in heaven, we are grateful for this moment you have allowed us to experience amidst the crisis, amidst the fear and doubts and hopelessness within us. We acknowledge these things in us, Lord. But Father, allow us to turn our thoughts away from our troubles. Let us help us to learn to trust you in this time. Let us draw, near, draw strength from your strength and help us to live a life of love, fueled with undaunted hope and faith. We cannot do this alone, O oh Lord. Allow us to be drawn near to you. Allow us to be surrounded with your people and help us see on the things that we can do in accordance to your will. This is all we ask in your name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. Amen. I pray, brothers and sisters, that you continue to do God bless us all.